Now, viewing ADHD as this neurogenetic or neurobiologic disorder of self-regulation brings with it some very important insights I would want you and families who I counsel to understand, not the least of which is this one. This is ADHD writ large. It's always now. ADHD is, to summarize it in a single phrase, time blindness. People with ADHD cannot deal with time, and that includes looking back, to look ahead, to get ready for what's coming at you. So the individual with ADHD is kind of living in the now, and wherever the now goes, they are being pulled along by the nose, wherever it goes. I'll give you an example from our adults clinic. It's uh, rather funny, but it wasn't to his wife. This couple came into our office in Massachusetts once, and she said, let me tell you what it's like living with this guy, because it's like having a fourth child, actually. This is what happened last weekend. She says, if you can't do something about this, I'm leaving him. Here's what happened. He went out to mow the yard. He wheeled the lawnmower out of the garage, and the tank was empty. So he reached for the fuel can. It was empty, too. So he threw it in the back of the Ford Explorer and headed down to the little quickie mart. And while he was filling up the gas can, his buddy pulls in in his Ford Explorer and says, you know it's opening day on the trout stream. What do you say we go fish a little bit? And so the guy hops in his buddy's Explorer, and they go fly fishing. <laughs> and they are out for six hours. And then they get thirsty and decide to stop off at a pub for a beer. So now they're at the little local tavern. This is a true story, by the way, because within an hour, the state police had found his car still running in an open gas can at the quick <laughs> mart. And he finally wandered home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Do you see what happens? doesn't matter what your plans were, what your goals were. The now is more compelling than the information you're holding in mind. And you will get pulled along by the now. You are time blind. Because if we had to summarize in a single sentence, what is the purpose of the frontal lobe to humans? It is to organize your behavior across time in anticipation of what is coming at you, the future. So ADHD creates a blindness to time, or technically, to be more accurate, a nearsightedness to the future. I can only be eloquent once. No. <laughs> this is extemporaneous. I'm not. Okay, ADHD right, is at its heart a blindness to time, or technically, to be exact, it is a nearsightedness to the future. Just as people who are nearsighted can only read things close at hand, people with ADHD can only deal with things near in time. The further out the event lies, the less they are capable of dealing with it. And this is why everything is left to the last minute. Because they only deal with last minutes. That's all they perceive, that's all they deal with, that's all they organize too. And so their life is a series of one crisis after another, all of which were avoidable because people prepared. And they didn't. They weren't ready on time, in time, over time, with what they needed at that time. <laughs> Note the word time. Right? So ADHD is destroying the timing and timeliness of human behavior. That is a very important thing for parents to understand. Because while a three-year-old does not have to have a sense of time, a 30-year-old does. And one of the most devastating deficits in adult life that ADHD produces is a disruption in the fabric of time. They can't cope with it as well as others. Now, this ability to organize across time comes with the capacity to build pyramids of behavior, from little behaviors to the bigger behaviors above them to the bigger goals above them. All human behavior can be organized into a hierarchy. Think about planning a wedding. Can you imagine the hierarchy you would have to create, the decision trees, and when they would have to be done, and when you would have to book the church and get the minister and get the flowers and book the reception hall? And all of those come with little subroutines, like picking up a telephone and calling your minister, right? It's the frontal lobe that allows you to organize all of those toward the single overarching purpose, the wedding. And that's what ADHD destroys. People with ADHD cannot hierarchically organize behavior. And so they are accustomed to dealing with behaviors in little fits and starts. But they can't glue those together as well as others to create the bigger goal to the bigger goal all the way up. 
And that's why you see a short attention span. It's not really a short attention span. It's the inability to organize behavior across time into a hierarchy. The ability to look ahead is called intention. So ADHD is actually IDD. It's intention deficit disorder. Because it doesn't matter what your intentions are, you're not going to do them. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, you can head out the door for school in the morning and promise your mother that you will not be put in time out again. You really will get it right today. You will behave yourself. You will not fight with the other kids. You will finish your work, and you mean it sincerely. But within an hour, your mother's getting the usual call that you're in time out and that you're disruptive and they need to come and get you, right? Notice what happens. Your intentions are not the problem. And it's not insincerity. It's the inability to organize around those intentions. So ADD is really IDD. Now, I want you to understand something. Your brain can be split into two pieces. The back part is where you acquire knowledge. The front part is where you use it. The back part is knowledge. The front part is performance. ADHD, like a meat cleaver, just split your brain in half. So it doesn't matter what you know. You won't use it. You have what we call in psychology a performance disorder. Performance disorders have nothing to do with skill. You have all the skills other people your age possess, but you can't use them. Because, you see, it's the executive system where the rubber meets the road, where what you know gets applied in every day what you do. And ADHD is a disorder of doing what you know. It is not a disorder of knowing what to do. And that is a very important thing I want families to understand as well. Your child, unless they were raised in a zoo or in a very impoverished area or were adopted out of some far-fetched, war-torn, undeveloped country, has all the information and knowledge that the other kids their age have. What they can't do is use it. It is the application of what you know that this disorder robs you of. So you can be the smartest person on the planet, and you're still going to do some pretty stupid things. Because it's not what you know. It's doing it.